It's time to get your geek on. It's Two Geeks TV. With your hosts, Victor and Sean. Tom McFarland. Yeah, he's about 10 years younger than I am. Something like that. Maybe a nine. I, I can't remember. You know exactly. 1983. Uh, in 1981, I was actually doing a magazine called Star Rider and the Peace Machine. You, you've probably never heard of it. No. It was a black and white magazine in the same format as Warren. And um, I yeah, and uh, and that format very shortly after that kind of disappeared, died. You know, but uh, Todd and two other artists uh, came to, would come to see me on a kind of a regular basis, and sometimes they would all come at the same time. Uh, there was a couple. Uh, I know uh, the the Hanson guy who who ended up working for Marvel. I don't know what he he, he didn't stay in comics very long, but. Um, they would they, they would sometimes meet and they, they got to know each other you know what I mean and one guy in particular and I, I wish I could remember his name ended up as an anchor for DC and in fact what was it curious about the whole thing was he was a, he was a young guy he was probably it was younger than Todd even and he he was living in southern Alberta um, and I, I remember him telling me his parents had been killed in a car accident. And the two sets of grandparents uh, fought over custody for him for something like nine years while he sat in an orphanage, which sounded like a, the craziest thing, you know. And um, he ended, uh, so I was in New York in something like 86. Um, I can't remember. It wasn't too, it wasn't too much longer after I'm, that. And... I'm there, I'm just visiting one of the editors at, at DC Comics, and he walks in with his girlfriend, and he's living, he, he had American, one of his grandparents was American, uh, or one of his parents was American, so he could live in the States. So he, um, he showed up to pick up some work, some inking work. And I'm saying, holy cow, you're here. I mean, like, what a coincidence. I haven't seen him in years, and here I'm, and it's a real fluke. I re don't go to New York very often. And here he shows up, and so it was kind of neat. To, but in, in Todd's case, uh, I, he would come Christmas, Easter, summer, you know, because he was going to school in Spokane. He was taking graphic design in Spokane uh, College. Or, yep. and, uh, when he, he said he came, where would he come? To Winnipeg? Or? No, no, in Calgary. in Calgary. He'd come to my office in Calgary. Oh. I, had, uh, an, I had office space in the United News Building. I, I used to... Uh, do all the, the design work for their catalogs so um, he would he would come and see me and um, show me his work <clears throat> ask for some feedback yep. <clears throat> and um, I I wasn't crazy about his his, uh, his faces and I I, I I remember making comments about how he needed to work on his feet and his hands and uh, drawing feet and hands and things like that and and I often tell the story to my students. I said, uh, you know, I, I gave him a, a lot of feedback, and it didn't stop him from becoming a millionaire. <laughs> you know, like um, so. And like I said, uh, in '83, I I went down to California, and um, for other reasons as well. And it was my very first time there in in uh, California. San Diego. And I also went to the San Diego Con while I was down there, and um, I, um, yeah, and I, him and his dad and I, um, the three of us, shared a, a motel room together to save money. And at that time, I was doing coloring for for a few companies, and I was trying to pick up more work. And I had a title called Alien Angel that I was also hoping to find, you know, a home for, and um, so. I was seeing different people than than he was seeing. He was seeing editors for Marvel, DC, all the companies, and and there were a lot of smaller companies like First and and uh, others. 
And like I said, he um, he saw he he told me he saw forty different editors. I mean, he he was a guy who was very focused and and thorough, and uh, and he went to see forty different editors with his samples. And uh, and I know he was disappointed because nobody gave him any work. I mean, he was hoping that they would say, "Yeah, we, you know, we'll." Yep. And and I don't I don't think very many people get that kind of reaction, anyways. And uh, but um, and then I, I, you know, I saw him maybe once or twice after that. In '85, we moved to Ontario, and I don't I don't think I saw him more than a couple of times after that. Uh, it might have been three or four even, but it wasn't very many. And uh, that's when he started um, sending samples to those 40 editors on a weekly basis, a new batch of samples that he would photocopy. And you know, he didn't tell me this story directly himself. I, I heard it elsewhere. But um, um, and I do have a letter from him. And it said, and he always called me Mr. Cumley because I was 10 years older and he was very respectful kind of thing. And... Um, he, he sent me a letter, and he had a photocopy of, of his, his Spawn character uh, stapled to the letter. And he, um, he said, um, this is a character I want to do a comic book about one day. And I gave, that, I gave that to one of my kids. So, you know, yeah. So that's my Todd McFarlane uh, connection. Keep on geeking on.